you must tune in. He's ironic, iconic, maybe bionic. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the genius. He's a genius. Hello, ladies and gents. I'm Michael Burhan, and this man is Oliver Hughes. And today we are talking about Shadowrun Returns. It's a tactical science fiction strategy turn-based RPG uh, developed and produced by Hairbrain Schemes, uh, currently on Steam, uh, Linux, uh, Android-based iOS devices as well. Uh, and it's priced at $18.99, but you can actually get it currently for 75% off on Steam for four seventy four dollars the Deluxe Edition. Now, um, this game itself, is we were kind of going back and forth as to if we wanted to buy this or not because Steam had currently had a sale going on, and yeah, um, we we kind of went in a little bit blind. We read it because we weren't sure. We yeah. we heard of the brand. We've heard of um, Shadow One before. Yeah, um, but we weren't quite sure. So we did read a review or two, and then we weren't sure because people said it was a good game, but they were. We'll explain why. But we ended up kind of erring on the side of caution, but we'd give it a go. Yeah. Uh, the game was released originally on the July the 25th, um, and the the game itself... It, we, yeah, we, we had a kind of a, a warning on this game because it was full of text. Uh, and it, it reminds us basically of the old 8-bit to 16-bit games where you used to have kind of text-based um, RPGs in a sense. It, yeah. You know, um, it wasn't the same levels as games like Pokemon that keeps it kind of simple. This was like reading a book of text. So when we were doing the short plays, we had to make it a little bit more fun, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> In a sense, by creating our own little characters and making voices and stuff. Yeah, um, so what, the sort, type of game and the objective. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, the type of game itself, um, well, it's a, as I said, a science fiction strategy RPG. Like, um, um, about, but it's, it's a... Um, it's a kind of in the same vein as... Third it's, person... Yeah. Oh, above um, camera at a 45 degree angle um, and it and it's square based so you you move squares yeah um, so it's kind of like moving on a chessboard in a sense so again it mirrors those those systems of ages so there is kind of that nostalgic feeling towards it yeah uh, very simplistic in terms of its design but everything looks like it was hand painted in a sense um, now going on from kind of the the type of game to kind of the the gameplay itself. How did you find when you were when you were playing it? Because um, it's kind of you had to rely a lot on the mouse for this. Yeah, no, I mean it, it it's very 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 simple controls. Yeah. Um, left mouse click, right mouse drags the um, the camera about. Yeah, it like kind the, of allows you to scroll the screen. Yeah, that's about all it is. Yeah. Um, I, you know, the actual gameplay itself, um, the actual game itself, I liked because it felt very much similar to sort of um, D and D um, type um, RPGs. Um, yeah. It has a couple of um, races, as um, most RPGs will. So it has obviously human, but it, it has a bit of Tolkien feel to it. So it's human, elf, no, um, no, no um, dwarf. Yeah. Orc and um, troll. You can also play in different genders, like male and female. Yeah. First thing is, what do, what what gender do you want to be? What species do you want to be? And then what class you want to be? They made it. They were very clever in terms of the class themselves because you you kind of had the standard like mage classes, um, but they would turn like classes like warrior in a sense to street ninjas. You know. Yeah. They they would use. But that'd be a, that'd be a kind of a mix between um, anyone who's done D and D will be um, that'd be a mix between a muck a monk and a warrior. Yeah, or a thief as well in, in a sense in terms of combat thief. style. Yeah. Um, then you had like the the cyber tech guys who were kind of like hackers, um, so they would have kind of some thief abilities and abilities to kind of like unlock rooms and, and pick locks. Yeah. Depending on their skill levels, um, and then you had like this kind of as you progress forward, you had a skill tree. So it, yeah, it allowed you to level up your skill tree. But I mean, we go back, go back to when you were actually creating the character. Yeah. Um, obviously, you choose your race and you choose your class. Yeah. Um, good thing is you kind of get to we we just kind of chose a random picture and yeah. it kind of modelled the um, person on it. But you can change what what he looked like, height, colour, hair, all of that sort of thing. Yeah. And then there was a nice little perk that it shows you um, what your personality is like. 
Um, so depending on your personality, you could basically change the way that you talk to people. Yeah, so there's things like, uh, there were, I think the first one was corporate, and then gang member, then security. security. And we chose Shadow Runner, didn't Shadow we? Shadow Runner. Because we didn't know much about the class itself. So we just do it. Um, and then when you get into the game, they open up extra dialogue issues. So if you're talking to a gang member, you could use your gang personality to be like, oh, I know what it's like. Um, but this police around the corner, don't uh, I spotted them, don't do it today. And they'd be like, yeah, all right, fair enough. Or you could use your security as, um, yeah, you could basically big yourself up to like a, a bouncer and be yeah. like, I know what, I, what your job's like, uh, don't get in my way. And they'd be like, all right, all right. So it's, it, it's great. It changes the level that you kind of interact with people and the whole communication aspect of it. Yeah. Um, which I think is a very new and unique feature in terms of the way that the game is played because it changes the way that information is given to you and it can also leave characters, certain characters that you play with, unobtainable in a sense. Like uh, we had an issue where we kind of talked down to a police officer and then he asked for payment, otherwise he wasn't going to give us any more information. And uh, because of that, it kind of left us in a bind where we, we didn't, didn't have, have enough money to actually pay him off and he just refused to help us yeah but i mean that's another there's also the four main stats in your building yeah. you have the um strength dexterity charisma yeah. intelligence and i can't remember what the last what the last one is uh, body wasn't it no no that's because uh, you you know that, that comes on that strength. comes on strength uh, but, uh quickness speed yeah as well yeah so basically, each one of these um, stats, each class relies on that. So the class we chose was like a summoner, like yeah. a. Um, it's kind of a mixture between a wizard and a mage in a sense, because you get to summon characters to do your bidding. Yeah, like the um, um, yeah we haven't, we found that other mages in the game could do fireball straight away and do like frost and heal. Yeah, our character couldn't do that. Our you had to like level a summoner. Up. So yeah. I think later on in the game. When we become more powerful, we'll be able to like because we saw in the first level one of the enemies summon some fire demon, and that's the sort of character we were going for. Yeah. Um, and our base skill was charisma, so we had to build up our charisma over other things. So when we get into conversation stuff, there might be stuff like if you have a high strength, you can intimidate people. If you have a high intelligence, you can think your way. You get it's all about extra um, options in the dialogue where you can do stuff. We haven't come across anything where it's needed charisma yet. Yeah, and that's the, the fun thing about it as well. It's there's a kind of a a learning curve to it as well. It, you've, in terms of the game itself, you have to learn how to interact with these abilities and how everything is put together. Because there's no, from what we've seen, there wasn't really a tutorial about it. It was just it kind of put you in the world and you had to figure your own way through. Yeah. Um, which wasn't a negative behind this, in my opinion. It, it kind of actually leads more to a positive. Yeah. Um, because we picked things up very quickly. We, between us, we figured out what to do. And, and um, it gave us kind of a, a, a bit more of an a vantage point into uh, going into this world with kind of fresh eyes, yeah. in a sense. Would and, you say on the actual um, the, the world itself, the... Um the world that it's based in. I liked it. It was kind of a, a mixture between, as you said, the token kind of worlds, but also um, it had that, that. It kind of has that mythical slash um, cyberpunk. cyberpunk aspect to it. Yeah. So it was kind of like imagine having kind of a, a Tolkien universe and have it set in Blade Runner. Yeah. So um, you'd have someone with a machine gun, and next to them will be uh, someone casting fireballs. Yeah. Uh, and stuff like um, you in the like beginning, it. there's a murder, um, and the person who committed the murder, they looked at what it was, and it was a mixture of sleeping pills or something and magic. So yeah. basically, magic and science and technology are kind of mixed up, which yeah. is which is a great very thing. well done. Um, and you you kind of unlock those abilities that it, like as we continue through the game, we ended up having be, to be able to kind of unlock an ability where you can actually get like cyber prosthetics to extend your abilities even more. So yeah, that's a good point. After, you don't just kind of wear your ar wear your um, armor yeah. uh, or your clothing, which works out of different uh, armors, um, your different spells we had, because we had a spell slot, you have your item slots, um, but then you also have your um, different body slots where yeah. 
it's really expensive. We didn't know any had enough money. It plays around with the universe as well because it, it, it le looks at those who are born with magical abilities. You don't have to be born with them. You can actually get yourself made. Um, using cybernetics to kind of give you those advantages to be able as well. To, yeah, to be able to cast magic. Yeah, and it's it's a it was a really weird but kind of satisfying as well at the same time because you wanted to continue with the story, um, even though kind of the text was monotonous. Yeah, it was a very, lot of reading. Yeah, like, <laughs> like old school um, RPGs that is kind of emulating almost yeah. is like the Pokemon's, the early Final Fantasies. Well, Pokemon kind of was simplistic because it would have like two or three dialogues. Yeah, of text. even Final Fantasy, they would have five or six lines. Yeah, this was like the, this was a whole monologue. Um, realistic because people do talk in a lot. <laughs> people talk in um, paragraphs. People yeah. don't talk in a single sentence and then you say something and then I say something and you say something and then it's over. People do talk a lot, and it felt like. But it gave us a lot of information to take in as well at the same time. So. Um, you would, if you wanted to understand everything, you would have to write it down. Um, it got to the point where so much was going on, you would need to figure things out. But as Ollie actually uh, stated as well, you don't have to listen, you know, read the yeah. dialogue. It's it's basically There's, due to your responses, you can know what's going on. Yeah, it, it got it got it gets to a point where I, if we didn't, we, if we weren't doing it for a uh, playthrough um, to actually get the story, the story is really good. Um, but if I was playing it by myself, I would just click through what they're saying and judge what the conversation's happening by what my responses are. Yeah. Um, you can normally, like, if it says, like, oh, so who killed him? You know someone got killed. Um, oh, so that's the weapon they used. You know you, they told you about the weapon. Yeah, and if they mention a name, you just go to the name and then, like, figure it out. Yeah. There's certain shortcuts you can take as well, depending on your abilities. Um, like, there, were, there was a fun little gem in it where you could... Um, go to a room and hack the room if you had the cyber tech add-on. Um, whereas um, if you couldn't, you had to use a key card. Or there were certain advantages you could get by hacking by like kind of a hard hacking a machine. Yeah. Whereas we had to figure out the password by digging a little deeper in the room, and yeah. it, it gave us certain vantage points that to look at this from. I mean, that's what I mean. We could have. I mean, even though we were like a summoner, we could have put. Because basically you up, you level up by getting karma points, which yeah. are basically just experience points. Um, but you can put them in any skill slot you like. So we could have put them in hacking, but then we'd be a crap summoner. Yeah, uh, it, it, you can be a jack of all trades. Yeah, it it does work because you do get versatile, but it doesn't become a main thing like it would do if you actually were serving as that class to begin with. Yeah. Um, so I you do. know there are certain advantages and disadvantages by using a certain thing as your main focus. If you were cyber tech, you'd probably be able to off the bat use drones. Um, whereas but you would better cast spells. But then if yeah. you wanted to put um, thing into spell casting, you could do that. But then that those points have to come from somewhere else. Yeah, but you wouldn't be as strong as say if you were a spell caster to begin with. Um, that brings us basically to the length of play on the game. In terms of game length, what do you feel would because it's a, it seems like a very long RPG. Yeah, there's um, a lot that we have to do, including side missions, to get the information that we need. It all depends. Um, if you read every single word, which what we did, which you do, um, we really really enjoyed the story. Um, yeah, we only just kind of got the opening. Um, we got the opening quest, and then we kind of came across someone who knows about how to finish it, and then we have to save someone, and that was kind of the first major mission, and that took us a good two hours or so just to do that little thing, and that was just the story just kicking off. Yeah. Uh, so far, we haven't broken ground on the story itself, and, and yeah. we wanted to play more, uh, but we had this review to do, so <laughs> it kind of... Um, left us in a kind of a bind where we had to just leave it where we left off. But at. yeah, you, we could have done it all in half an hour if you skip if you skip the um, text. You could easily do it in half an hour. I would say from if what you want speed money, yeah. from what I've seen, uh, but that's what I mean. Second time, second playthrough, um, uh, gameplay. What I've seen is if you skip the um, text, it's about a six hour game. 
Mm. If you don't skip the text, you're looking 20, 30 hours. Um, yeah, because there's a lot to go through and a lot of digging as well in terms of the game itself because you have to go through the game and figure out everything that's going on. But again, if for one of those people who love these style of RPGs, I think you'll enjoy it. Yeah. You know, Re I, as we are doing. Replay value is absolutely amazing because yeah. not just you can choose your class, you can choose your species, which then changes um, something. Because things like trolls, people are prejudiced against trolls, so yeah. that will shut down and open up completely different sets of things. Elves, people think elves are all um, high and mighty, so people don't really trust them, but people kind of respect them at the same time. Yeah. Humans are tra jack of all trades, so you don't really get anything. So you can play it through, and it'd be a but we even different we didn't game. even like look at men and females as well. We had, didn't have a look at that and see if there was a response on that one. So truthfully, if you're looking, it at might be yeah, because some of the characters are a, well. One of the guys was a little bit of a chauvinist, so he yeah. may have. We were a male, so he may have. Um, and it's yeah, a very weird universe. Like yeah, it brings out kind of a social experiment in itself um, because of the fact of how the characters interact and respond to you, and that's great, you know. And and a lot of what was been sacrificed, you can see why, in, in a sense, because you can actually it, it opens up this whole new world where you ha will have to play through the game four or five different times because you want to see what's going on, you want to see what's happening and you want to see how the characters will interact and how the plot changes as you progress. Which is, you know, I, I, I take my hat off to, um, to the studio for doing this because it's, it's something that a lot of time and thought has been put into this game. Yeah, um, but no voice acting. Yeah, and That's... so... It would have been very easy to throw up by that. So that, let's go on to sound and audio then. Let's, let's bring that about because the fact of the voice acting is non-existent. It's not there. Um, you you do have like the gunshots. It's kind of one of those where it looks like they've they've used a lot of um, normal sound files, yeah, like 3D stop, sound files, yeah, to stop, stop files. Yeah, yeah, stop footage. Nothing special about the audio. Yeah. Um, and it would have been nice. I mean. I understand that they can't have every um, NPC speak, um, but the major characters that you come across, the party members that join you, because um, we've had a few people join us and then, and then leave. leave, so we haven't had anyone stay with us permanently, so we don't know if they will. Yeah, and the, th the thing about it as well, I would have liked to see a lot more, um, you know, like kind of interaction. Even if you, it's not one talking, I would like to hear like responses is like um, someone just go hmm, you know, or um, a sound, certain hmm. sounds, and that that kind of leads. But no, but the thing is, the writing very good. Yeah. It's very much like reading a play. They will describe you if you if everything. You, yeah, so it will be like hmm. It, the character will say hmm, and then it will say mate, um, size uh, disgruntledly. So yeah. you know how to read it. Um, it's kind of it has that that whole kind of script style aspect to it. Yeah, which can, I like. So, yeah. you, and it'll be like um, it'll explain exactly how they're feeling. Yeah. Um, um, the the music, um, it's good. You know, you, you have that kind of techno cyberpunkish um, sort of feel to it at the same time. So they really understand the universe that they're playing around with. Um, but that's you graphics, know, graphics, visuals. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about when we, you know, we're moving on from audio to graphics and visuals. Everything is handcrafted, like the the buildings, the way that everything's been designed. It has that whole two point five D aspect, yeah, in the sense where the character models themselves are kind of um, they're sprites themselves, but they have that kind of free palette to them. Whereas the, the visuals of the world itself looks hand drawn. I think that may have just been because of the because there was a couple of options at the beginning of um, how you'd like it. Because I think there was a follow. I think yeah. you can, but the way we played it, it did look like the old school at forty five degree angle. Yeah. Um, you can go down left, up right, up left, and down. And it's right. you know very expressive. The the sprites themselves um, were had that that kind of talent for them as well at the same time very movable beautifully done uh, and it looked like something that could easily be transferred from platform to platform it, it kind of had gave me that same feel as games like XCOM uh, enemy unknown you know not the declassified kind of third-person shooter thing I mean the original XCOM um, where you could 
basically play around with these characters and, and go from place to place and then when it gets to the but without sort of the use of cover there's because yeah. there's still the shooting and the magic I, yeah. I wish there was use of cover would have been a bit more so you can hide behind something so you don't always get hit by fireballs yeah because there is line of sight in there which yeah. is nice there's line of sight um, you know and that, that brings us forward to like value for money um, at its current form it stands 75% off £4.74 for the deluxe edition plus the soundtrack what would you say in terms of, of um, the you know it, when it goes back to its current price of eighteen ninety what it was around about yeah eighteen ninety nine eighteen ninety nine uh, no um, to be honest I wouldn't have it if this game was on a handheld console like the PSP or something um, then yeah that's absolutely perfect um, or even like um, the Game Boy or something if it was one of the if it was on um, what you mean the 3DS the three, yeah still a Game Boy yeah um, yeah if it was on one of those consoles then perfect you pay the £10 or whatever it is I pay up to wouldn't pay eighteen ninety nine for it just because it it feels old with the no voices and it feels very tedious. It's very um, retro. It looks like it has been aimed for the retro market and for RPG fans. Yeah, I'm I'm a big RPG fan. I'm a big old school RPG mm. fan. I I like retro but this is just a little bit it's like the bad parts of retro games it's thrown in. I've played old retro games where it's thrown voices in. Mm. Um and they just the gameplay. So value for money no, at at the at the discount, yes, easy, full price, never. Yeah. So what I would suggest is, if anybody out, if you currently can take advantage of the sale now, do so, um, or just wait until they have another sale going on with this game. It's a really good game, very expansive, great like mechanics, great gameplay, but in terms of the money and the way it stands, I have to agree with Volley. Um, if they were selling it for like ten pounds. Um, and it was basically like a 3DS title or um, a title that I could take with me anywhere that I wanted to play. And yeah, great. You know, I'm even considering getting it for handheld devices because it means I've got something to play while I'm waiting around the doctor's office. I do feel that there's they they should have added a multiplayer function to it. It would have allowed the game to be so much better um, because it would have allowed you to have some teammates and people you can cooperate with and give a bit more fun to it. We kind of kept at, but at the pace of the forth. game. Um, you, you you can only have it as single player because it goes at your pace. Yeah. If someone else wants to skip through stuff, you're going to frustrate people because you'd have to wait Very for true. everyone to uh, either everyone has access to skipping the uh, this audio, mm. uh, sorry, the text, or no one does. Um, so going on from that, what would you say the final score? Final score was it out of ten, right? Out of ten from you know where it currently stands, because there's a lot more positives I heard from you than negatives. Yeah, no, I would definitely give it um, a seven, a seven out of ten. Um, very good game, felt good. Um, the kind of the adventure side of it is pretty good, mm. and then it's it flips to um, combat very well. Story is and very adult as well. Yeah. Um, there's like murder, prostitutes, um, like dismemberment. It has that kind of noir feel to it. Yeah. So, but I would have given it an eight or a nine. But honestly, the lack of voice is probably. So I put it down to six point five actually because that is a very big gripe in my book. But six point five seven. Yeah. Uh, I'll give it yeah. an eight, uh, and the reason being is it's highly enjoyable, very addictive. Um, it does get monotonous with the text, but that's not an issue with me too much because I, I love storied and structured games, and it's a great game to have. Uh, for the current price, though, it does bug me, so I would advise anybody to, if you want this game, go and see if you can get it at a reduced price. Um, you know, or for, wait. yeah, or wait for another Steam sale or even a humble bundle sale, and see if you can grab it as part of that. But I'm um, very, very enjoyable great game everything fits for me um, and I'm, I'm not really bothered by the fact there's no voices and the reason being is it's a game that plays and builds itself on nostalgic um, experiences and nostalgic moments it doesn't build itself on the current standard of gaming um, so I'm, I'm really really happy with it um, great purchase for £4.74 
um, that I, I bought, you know, and I, as I said, I, it took a lot of coaxing from Ollie um, to, to bring me there, but it's, it, it's a great game and I can't wait to continue playing. So whenever I get free time again to play, definitely uh, going to okay. be on my list. And final thoughts, one, one line. Uh, one line that sums this game up for me. Or how you feel in general. Unique. Very unique. Mm, nice, nice. And I would probably say... Awesome text heavy. So there you go, guys. Um, that's another review from us. I hope that whets your palate and keeps you satisfied. And I'm Michael mm. Burhan. He's Oliver Hughes saying that we've got gameplay. Have you? Oi!